I'm Holly. And I'm Bridget. And this is Girls Next Level. (laughs) Welcome back to Girls Next Level, everybody. My energy is low and weird, so I'm hoping I pick it up. It's just... I don't know when this will air, but when we're recording this, there's a retrograde coming next month. And I always feel Mercury retrogrades early. I don't know why that is. I've asked astrologers to try to explain it to me. Like, is there something in my birth chart? But it happens all the time. I couldn't upload. Like, our Patreon was late this week. Our YouTube is still uploading behind this recording software I have going (laughs) so it's a time yeah I was getting a million messages this morning oh it it hasn't posted it hasn't posted I'm like it will (laughs) yeah I was in Vegas this weekend and there was a crazy windstorm Mm -hmm. and I think that just like fucked up my wi-fi they were talking like 70 mile an hour winds or something like that it was nuts there were like downed trees in my neighborhood and crazy like it, it'll be to the point where you're driving and you feel your car shake which is a little scary that is scary that is so scary yeah <laughs> and you have to watch out not to be driving next to like big old trucks and stuff like that because they can tip over if they're not full stop it right i've seen now. them tipped over Ew. like on the five and stuff oh no it's scary yeah i don't like that but nick got a new car he did <laughs> <laughs> with a bow with a bow you guys i'm so jealous he just sent me a picture and he's picking it up with a friend right now and there's a giant bow on it i didn't have a giant bow on mine when i got my car yeah that's so festive <laughs> i love it i said i'm jealous of the bow <laughs> i know that's so cool what else has been going on this weekend just working on some projects and stuff that i'm hoping will come to fruition soon that i'm mm-hmm. super excited about I don't want to, I don't want to, I'm not trying to tease it at the same time, but I'm also not trying to give too much information because like it's one of those things that isn't happening yet. And so I don't want to jinx it. That's always tough with projects because especially when you're out doing press, people always want to know, so what's next and what are you doing? You're like, well, I can't, you don't want to say what it is if it's not happening because you don't want to jinx it or you don't want people to steal your idea, but then you don't want to make it sound like, oh, nothing going on. Because you're working on something. Right. It's so tricky. Like, I admire people who can navigate that well. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, and I just got the invitation for my grandma's 105th birthday. Whoa. On March 31st. That's crazy. So, yeah. That's crazy. (laughs) (laughs) So the topic of today's episode of Girls Next Door, it's called The 21 Club. It's about Kendra's 21st birthday, is turning 21. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask you, what was your 21st birthday like? Um, Mine was celebrated in a couple of different ways. Mm -hmm. So I was engaged at the time. And I went with my fiance at the time Uh to Vegas. I was super excited. I think think this may have been the very first time I went to Vegas oh wow and if it wasn't the first time I'd only been for like a convention or something Mm -hmm. before I didn't like really go and explore but I remember and this was back I mean it's not that Vegas isn't still cool of course it's still cool Mm -hmm. but this was back when I thought things were really cool when all the hotels were super themed oh it was your era yes (laughs) and we stayed at the MGM Grand and it was there was the Emerald Palace was in the lobby yeah tell people a little bit because people might not know when the MGM Grand opened or reopened in the 90s it was full like MGM movie old school theater themed Wizard of Oz there was yes. an amusement park yes there and were like creepy Dorothy animatronics you know a story I heard that I love this is like an old like Vegas story they used to every year they would have a scavenger hunt for like the employees of MGM Grand and there would be like cool prizes and stuff but the thing was you had there was a stuffed Toto the dog hidden somewhere and you had to find Toto oh my god I don't know why I like that story so much but I do yeah so we just walked around and saw all the different different casinos because they were all super themed like this and it, we just thought it was so incredible and played video poker I remember going over to Caesar's Palace and seeing you know in the forum shops those statues coming to life was like a big thing that you stood around and waited for I think they still have that I mean it's probably hokey now but yeah. at the time <laughs> it was amazing and the way the skies was painted uh-huh. inside the casino like you felt like you were outside but you were inside yeah. like I just couldn't stop raving about how much I loved Vegas and how uh-huh. incredible it was and and I was so excited each time we went into a new uh, oh oh the pirate show and the, the volcano erupting show. they're getting rid of the volcano and I'm so upset See, I just hate all of this and it's I'm all so upset it's all turning into 
luxury hotels, but generic. So I just loved, we walked the strip. Mm -hmm. We didn't take taxis anywhere. Like we walked up and down that strip. We went into every themed casino. I remember we played um, video poker, which you guys know I've talked about that I like doing right at the bar. And I was so excited to order. I remember ordering strawberry daiquiris and uh -huh. like amaretto sours. And to tell you guys that I was hungover, I was so hungover from oh all that my sugar gosh. and shit. Like so hungover. I'm pretty sure we went to Planet Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I mean, that could have been on it a was later the trip. La wait, wait, what year was this? 90, it would have to be 94. It was the Aladdin back then. Was it? Was Planet Hollywood the restaurant open? Because I'm only talking oh, about the restaurant. Oh, that's you mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was in Forum Shops. Oh, okay. I thought you meant the casino. I was like, oh, no, sorry, no. The Aladdin. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just talking about the restaurant. We thought the restaurant was so cool oh with like God. this. And now I laugh because I don't know, Planet Hollywood restaurant seems silly now. But like back then, it was like so cool. There was like memorabilia in yeah. there, and it was so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I could not talk about Vegas enough. Like, I was so excited. Did you go into any nightclubs? Yes. I am second guessing myself here, but was Studio 54 open? I just remembered where I went. It doesn't exist anymore. What? It was called The Drink, and it was fucking cool. What the f is the drink it wasn't even on the strip and it was like all rock it looked weird like i don't even know how to describe it you'll have to look up what the building looked like because it was crazy it was like all rock and stuff i'm intrigued and it was like the hottest club and we went to the drink oh my, oh my God. gosh and remember i told you i'm remembering all this stuff now that i'm talking about it we went to this restaurant it was over i think by the Fashion Valley Mall, is that what it's called? Fashion Square Mall or Fashion? Fashion Show Mall. Fashion Show yeah. Mall. It was, I think it was over by there and it was called The Dive. I told you about this before. Mm -hmm. You went inside and it was like you were in a submarine and the windows were like portholes and they would oh. fill up with water and it looked like you were going under. Didn't they have one at Century City? Yeah, but I think we went and it wasn't as cool as the Vegas one. Oh, I've never been to either. I just remember Ashley telling me they had one in Century City and it was like a thing that like LA kids remember fondly. Well, maybe either I didn't do the Century City one or I mm -hmm. went and was disappointed oh. because it wasn't like the Vegas one. Mm -hmm. But I remember thinking that was so cool. And one of the things I love too is I'm a dipper. Like I love condiments and stuff. Me too. And they brought like tons of dipping sauces with everything. You know what I saw? I sent this to Josh because he's another condiment lover. I don't even know where this is, but someplace has like a dispenser. It's like big. It's shaped like a cow and like the udders are like different dips. <laughs> That's kind of gross, but kind of funny. I know. It was cute if you see it. Oh, I told Nick at one time that I wanted to open up a restaurant that was called like The Dip. And everything was all, it was all about the dips that you could go with the food. Like it was all food you could dip, whether it was pretzel bites or corn dogs or like w w mozzarella sticks, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But everything has a dipping sauce. I fucking love a dip. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, you have to look up the drink because when I talk to people who like were around back in those days and in Vegas area and I say, oh, is that the drink? They're like, how do you know about okay. the drink? Like they freak out and everybody like I feel like anybody you would ask that would know about it back in that day would say that place fucking rocked. I'm igniting the group chat. Hang on. Yes. And I'm so curious what they're going to say. <laughs> so, yeah, I spent my 21st birthday at the drink. And I had a great time. None of it, none of this was VIP, you guys. We were staying in like, I'm sure we either drove or no, I think we, I think we took Southwest. We flew like Southwest or whatever it was at that time. We stayed in just a regular normal room. Like we bought wristbands for the club. Like nothing was VIP at all. Um, unlike what we're about to talk about today, but it was so fun and we had such a great time and I loved, loved, loved Vegas forevermore and still do from that point on. That is so fun. Yeah. So my 21st birthday was kind of the opposite. Oh, oh wait, can I tell you what else I did? Yeah. And then that was just with um, him and I. So uh -huh. then I went home and celebrated my 21st birthday with like my family and my friends and my coworkers. And after I got off work one day, we all went to this local like Italian restaurant that has like a bar on the side. Mm -hmm. And it was like free drinks all night long for me and my mom per the bartender because oh, wow. it was my birthday and nice. she's my mom. And all 
all of us got so wasted. I remember walking. I, I, at one point, I went, went into the bathroom. I th- Well, actually, I didn't even make it to the bathroom. <laughs> I threw up in my hands. Whoa. Ran to the bathroom, chucked it out, washed my <laughs> hands, rinsed my mouth out, and went back and started drinking some more. That's fucking funny funny and people were like you're a champ oh my god that's amazing <laughs> like thought that was amazing back then that is so funny um and my mom was so sick she was throwing up later too like it was not a good thing it was fun we all had a great time and it was definitely very memorable but we were so sick and the next day we were, we had committed to doing one of those stupid jewelry parties you know like um what is a jewelry <laughs> party is that like a tupperware party yes that's what i was what? just gonna say i've never heard it's like a Tupperware party where you invite people over, all your friends and stuff, and then like a costume jewelry and people buy it like Tupperware kind of. And we were we were like, is there any way? Like we were so hungover, like we can't do this. And they're like, we can't. Well, I can't cancel now. It's like the day of. Oh, my God. We were dragging out there. Dragging. Whoa. Did you buy any jewelry? I don't think so. I think I, all I could do to hold it down and be out there. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, anyway, so how, what was your 21st birthday like? Completely the opposite. I, I did absolutely nothing. I was very new to L.A. and I did nothing, which sounds really depressing from today's perspective. But it actually wasn't that bad. And I think the reason why is because my expectations just weren't very high at that point in my life. I don't know if you saw it the other night, but I just watched this whole documentary about like taking medications for weight loss, like all the injectables that are so popular right now and everything. But one of the things that struck me that they said is that you have to stay on that medication for the rest of your life because when you stop, most people gain it all back again. Like, I feel like all these weight loss medications are exciting and people are getting incredible results, but I feel like there's a catch. Like, it seems almost too simple. And having to be on a medication for the rest of your life or risk gaining all the weight back doesn't sound like very fun. But not when you visit Sonabello. Sonabello is the only way to permanently lose unwanted fat and inches. Sonabello doctors are masters in micro laser fat removal. Wherever you have stubborn fat, tummy, sides, thighs, arms, Smile, because it's going away permanently in one visit. Ask about their modern techniques to eliminate sagging, loose skin. Sonobello gives your curves back permanently. No more feeling embarrassed, shy, and uncomfortable about your body. No more hiding in baggy clothes. No more lights off, darkened room, pretending it's more intimate. Give yourself the gift of a full body reset. You deserve to be happy. Schedule your free consultation. Learn all about micro laser fat removal. Sonobello is running a great special right now. Visit sonobello.com slash next level. Sonobello dot com slash next level. Like I remember thinking it was kind of a bummer that, oh, I'm turning 21 and I don't have anything to do. But it was it wasn't like I was super depressed about it. It was more just motivating like, oh, I want to get out there and like make something out of my life. So next time I have a big birthday, I can do something cool. It was more like that kind of a vibe. Yeah. But also like my birthday's two days before Christmas. So I always kind of had like muted expectations when it comes to my birthday like my parents were always good about keeping it separate yeah from Christmas I didn't get like the merge that some people get but I was never having like birthday parties really or anything like that growing up and plus like we lived in a different time taking you back guys back in the time machine this was like pre my super sweet 16 on MTV this was like pre social media so you weren't really seeing like elaborate birthdays elaborate adult birthdays or things like that and I'm trying to think like what did my high school friends do for their 21st birthday like we had all scattered and gone to college at that point but I don't remember them coming back home on break being like oh my god you won't believe what I did for my 21st or anything it was probably just like going out to the bar with your sorority sisters or something yeah well um I was in northern California and I just remember like it was really cool if you could get to Vegas Mm -hmm. but if not it was like maybe Tahoe or Reno you know kind of thing and then or just like the local like clubs or bars or whatever yeah it's crazy how much culture changed in just like six years because it's like my 21st birthday I didn't really have much expectations but by the time it's like Kendra's 21st birthday a few years later it's like you're living in a different culture and of course we had way different access being at the mansion like that's night and day but you're just living in a culture where like 
it was like bling culture back then you know what I mean definitely yeah well um I think that if I hadn't have been um with who I was with it would have just been you know hanging out at the the Italian restaurant bar in Lodi that yeah. would have been the birthday I feel like I have to mention too like back to my 21st birthday one of the reasons I wasn't doing anything was because I was in college and like my two roommates were also college age and it was just like it was Christmas break so a lot of people were going back home to visit their families and I just didn't know a lot of people in town yeah I think it would be hard if I were in LA at that time yeah because I don't know what I would have done I probably would have been alone too or maybe maybe I would have told somebody who felt sorry for me and said let's go get a drink or let's go out somewhere or come with me and my friends were going here mm-hmm. I don't know but I think it would have been really hard if I were an L- a new person to LA yeah LA is a oddly lonely city until you find your niche I know we've talked about that before like in our prequel episodes and stuff yeah but for sure it's crazy um yeah but I just don't remember it being like you said it wasn't as big of a deal yeah so I wasn't like dead depressed over it or anything I was just kind of like oh you know what I really need to get my shit together so next time I have a big birthday I can do something yeah cool <laughs> yeah so Before we get into this episode, it's all about Kendra's 21st birthday. And it's a little bit tricky to do these episodes, I think, because it's so Kendra heavy. And obviously, she's a third of the show, so we have to talk about her. But I don't love talking about her. Yeah, we try to keep it to a minimum if we can to be both respectful and just because it's better that way. Yeah. But at the same time, when the episode is all about one person, pretty much, it's hard to, so we're going to just have to do it. Yeah. And I think it's interesting, too, because obviously we're probably going to take two podcast episodes to get through this Girls Next Door episode. But I went through kind of a roller coaster of emotions watching this. And it's so different from the first part that we're talking about today to what we'll be talking about next week. Like the first part, I almost, I was texting you like, uh, I'm going to need your help with this episode because it's so much about Kendra and I don't want to talk about her. And I've, I'm feeling very annoyed watching this episode. But then the second half, I felt completely opposite and I like, kind of missed my friendship with her and was like you know what it would be nice if we all three like got along and stuff so it was very roller coaster and it's just interesting how this episode like encapsulates all of it and I think it's particularly interesting because like I've been saying the past couple months as we've been in season two season two one of the biggest themes of it is like we have a weird up and down relationship with Kendra Mm -hmm. like we're not the team we were in season one right yeah so it's weird (laughs) <laughs> and then on some on in some situations I feel like the bonding is even stronger but then when it's not it's really not. Yeah, it's extreme. So um roller coaster is the best way to describe it because it is just on and then off, on yeah. and then off. It's crazy. So let's jump in the, the grotto, grotto time machine. <laughs> Don't get legionnaires disease. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Don't drink the water. So this episode aired on October 8th, 2006. And the number one song is still Sexy Back by Justin Timberlake. Wah, wah, wah. But I remember on this trip, particularly in Vegas, I remember listening to like Promiscuous by Nelly Furtado. I remember listening to Stars Are Blind by Paris Hilton. Like I specifically remember those playing out by the pool when I was hanging out with Destiny. Like that's... I don't remember Paris Hilton's song. What is that? You don't know Stars Are Blind? That That doesn't sound familiar to me holy shit okay it's actually a good song and I remember people like at the time like being surprised because you just think like in that time period you think oh this reality girl's doing an album eye roll but it was a good song like it was kind of like Gwen Stefani vibes a little bit maybe if I heard it I'd probably recognize I think it. you would maybe you don't know it's her maybe you think it's a Gwen Stefani song probably because I remember a lot of people thought that and I think it was originally written for Gwen but she didn't want to do it interesting yeah but it's a good song people love it it's a yeah. classic so the top movie at the time was the departed with leonardo dicaprio and jack nicholson that was a good movie that was so good i'm so excited because we always every other week or so we you know go back in time in the time machine and usually it's a movie that i don't care about i'm like what is this i know we're what like is what this was that? did we even but this watch is, that yeah <laughs> like, but this movie i'm like that was a good one that was good like i would still watch that today and be like that's a good movie speaking of jack nicholson his daughter lorraine nicholson wrote a really good article for vanity fair i don't know if you saw i linked 
it in my story, but it's really good. She just talks about like how she was friends with Marston and Cooper and kind of like growing up there. And she really captures. Oh, she talks about the mansion. Yeah. Oh. It's called Playmates and Playdates is the article. And it's really good. She's a really talented writer and she just really, ca- I think, I'll have to send you the link because I think you'll really love it. She just really captures the moments and times so well. Like the first thing she talks about is Easter and she captures Easter so well. You'll know when you read it. It's so good. I wrote her back. I'm like, that's because she DM'd me and is like, oh, read this. Let me know what you think. And I was like, you're such a great writer. Like right off the bat, like you capture East. Like I'm brought back to Easter. It's so good. And then she even talks about it like through the years, like up into his death and stuff. And like what people, a little bit about what people were saying at the memorial and things. And Oh, she was there. Yeah, I think you'll really enjoy it. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I'll send you the link. And I'll like, I'll, I'll post the link somewhere when we post this. Should I mention in the main podcast that I went to Hef's grave? Yeah, we talk about that more on our Patreon. We talk in detail about it in the Patreon, and I don't have to go into all the detail here, but it was impromptu. I didn't know I was going. I had a meeting right next door, and that there's because he's in Westwood, and there's a high rise building, and I had a meeting. And afterwards, the person I had the meeting with was like, "Oh, let's walk over." Yeah, it's one of our slumber parties. I I think I haven't posted it yet when we're recording this. I've- yeah, but uh, yeah, it was very interesting what happened to me there. So yeah, I want to check it out. Speaking of Hef, we are opening this episode up with an open mouth kiss because he goes into Kendra's room to like tell her something and he does this little greeting like, hi, baby, with the kiss. And I'm still weirded out that I never noticed how odd that open mouth kiss was at the time. Even watching the episodes back in the day, this is only something I noticed when we started doing the podcast like what is this frog kiss it's like a mandela effect for me almost (laughs) Um, and rascal's waiting for a kiss like if you watch the scene he like leans over and gives kendra a peck and rascal looks like he's waiting there for like his turn (laughs) rascal's like i'll do open mouth (laughs) yeah and this is clearly like a setup scene for sure where hef is telling kendra oh you know for your birthday we're giving you this overnight in vegas and stuff and then it cuts to me an interview and i say Kendra's kind of wild and she was really excited for her first overnight in Vegas but this was not Kendra's first overnight in Vegas like she'd been with her mom before she'd been with us before overnight and, though yeah we stayed the night and I'm sure she stayed the night because her and her mom stayed oh yeah because Tropicana. we did the yeah the palms yeah because we did the basketball suite that night we stayed the night yeah and oh, it's yeah. just another example of like these confessional interviews and the same was true in europe when i'm like this hef hasn't been to europe since the 70s when he really went five years ago like i'm just not giving a fuck what's true or not like i think i'm in my era of like they give me a line and i just give it right back and i don't care or it could also just be too like this is her first time spending the night in vegas like without parental. unchaperoned yeah. yeah i mean not that it's totally unchaperoned of course mm-hmm. we have to be with security, security and law lots of it but um but yeah yeah like I get what they're trying to say but also I'm in my I don't give a fuck what's true in these commentary yeah yeah I wanted to ask you though a couple questions here why do you think Hef did this because I feel like well I'm curious do you have a thought on that why he did this why he let her go on the trip yeah for why he did this for her 21st birthday um, well, I think a tw- Kendra's 21st birthday is just a natural thing to want to cover for the show, first off. Yeah, of course. Of course, a 21st birthday in Vegas is like the thing you're going to want to do. I, I remember thinking it was a no-brainer, and I knew that I wouldn't be able to go because I knew if I didn't offer to go home, no one would get to go. That's probably true, yeah. Well, I was just curious if it was for the cameras because I, if we oh. weren't shooting the show. Yeah, he wouldn't have let her go by, her, by herself. There's if, no way. If it was not for the cameras, he would have either planned a trip for all of us or, you know, we'll go out to dinner in a club and then maybe we'll like acknowledge your birthday next time we go to Vegas if he didn't want to do it at that moment. And why do you think he didn't come? Because I have some thoughts on it. Oh, I never really thought about that other than for him to go. It's just such, so much more extravagant. Like you'd have to have a private jet, pay for a private jet or have the Palms send a private jet. Well, I mean, A, he doesn't want to go. I mean, he wants to stay home. Like I don't think he thinks Kendra's birthday in Vegas sounds fun for him because it's not all about him. But it's just so much more expensive and such a fiasco to get have to go. What are your thoughts? I had a totally different thought. I think that... It's Kendra's 21st birthday. 
it's bound to get wild, but not nearly as wild as it would get if Hef came. Like if Hef wasn't there, it's going to get crazy. Oh, I think the show was thinking that. I think I you're think right. I think Kevin 100% didn't yeah. want Hef going. Well, let's see how crazy these girls get. Mm-hmm. When they have no rules for the night. Yeah, like if I stay home, it's fine, but you guys can go dip. And again, like you said, it's not totally unchaperoned. There's security, heavy security watching you guys. But there's move. nobody telling us we have to be back to the room at a certain yeah. time or that we can't go and do something. They're only watching out for our own security and for Hef's best interest. Like if, mm-hmm. you know, they're not going to let us bring a bunch of guys back to the yeah. room or anything like that. Subtle results. Still you, but with fewer lines. Botox Cosmetic on a botch Botulinum toxin A is a prescription medicine used to temporarily make moderate to severe frown lines, crow's feet, and forehead lines look better in adults. Effects of Botox Cosmetic may spread hours to weeks after injection, causing serious symptoms. Alert your doctor right away as difficulties swallowing, speaking, breathing, eye problems, or muscle weakness may be a sign of a life-threatening condition. Patients with these conditions before injection are at highest risk. Don't receive Botox Cosmetic if you have a skin infection. Side effects may include allergic reactions, injection site pain, headache, eyebrow and eyelid drooping, and eyelid swelling. Allergic reactions can include rash, welts, asthma symptoms, and dizziness. Tell your doctor about medical history, muscle or nerve conditions including ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, myasthenia gravis, or Lambert-Eaton syndrome and medications, including botulinum toxins, as these may increase the risk of serious side effects. For full safety information, visit BotoxCosmetic.com or call 877-351-0300. See for yourself at BotoxCosmetic.com. But I I feel like this was a deliberate, like this is Kendra's 21st birthday. A group of playmates are going and, and girls. And let's see how wild this gets. Totally. I think both are totally true. I think Hef just didn't want to go. And he's willing to let you guys dip into that territory as long as you're supervised. I also think that it's because he had such a relationship. And this will come out later after we leave mm-hmm. or at the end of our journey at with Hef and everything but I think he thought he had a really tight bond with the palms and the maloofs and the security and well, cameras he did. I'd find that out later <laughs> yeah, exactly is what I'm inching towards like he was able to see security camera footage if he wanted to um comings and goings from the room if he wanted to and people gave him full reports not only from his own security that were with us but from the palms yeah. And we didn't know that at the time. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that gave him a certain sense of security yeah. <laughs> to, to allow this to happen. Another thing I say in my confessional that's a little bit true, a little bit bullshit, is I'm like, she's turning 21 in a place where you have the best opportunities to get into any field you want. And I know what I'm trying to do. I know I'm trying to be like complimentary to like the Playboy Empire and Hef and look at all these opportunities. And she does have kind of the world at her feet and opportunities but it's a little bit it's a little stretch to say in any field you want you know what I mean yeah no (laughs) I know I put this in my notes too but I totally get what you're going with this like basically she had the 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 world and the palm of her hand at this totally like we have a hit tv show she's just turning 21 Mm -hmm. we you know like we just had a lot going on at this point yeah and I think you could have like if you had wanted to go in that direction there's Like if you had wanted to be in law, you could do an internship in legal at Playboy or something, you know, like there's if, you know, you had so wanted. Yeah. I also think it's interesting in this scene because it shows you putting together a gift for Kendra and even signing the card. But I think that that's interesting that they show that because of what's about to happen a little later. You're right. I do put a gift together for her, but the card I'm writing isn't Kendra's birthday card because they focus in and it says it's to Tracy Coulter, I think, because it says Tracy. She had given us the um, the onesie pajamas for Kara's birthday. And that's oh. what my thank you card is for. Like, thank oh. you for the pajamas. They were so cute. Well, they full on. I didn't even pay attention to what the uh-huh. card was saying, but they're full on trying to make it look like you're signing her birthday card. Yeah, but then they peace out and they don't show me really giving her like a real gift. Which well, is, we're we'll going to get into that. Yeah. yeah. And you are wrapping your present for Kendra. And this is one of 
of my favorite packagings that I've ever seen you do. It looks like a blackjack table. It's like green with like a fringe and like dollar bills. And you're like, I wanted to get crisp dollar bills from the bank and these aren't crisp. And all I can think of when you're putting the dollar bills down is the story that I told a couple of weeks ago about like Dick Van Patten and Robert Evans, how they went to the strip club and the strippers would pick up dollar bills with their vaginas and we were Ew. trying to like figure out how they were doing that. That makes me want to put like gloves on when Paper I touch money. Paper money is so dirty. <laughs> they say it is. They say it's so bad. But I taped all those uh, bills. I had like um, the shot glasses, big fuzzy dice. I had the cards, all the cards equal 21 that were on there. It, I tried to make it look like four different people were playing. Yeah, I liked that that wrapping. It was cute. And you look really good in this scene and you look really good this whole episode. Oh, thanks. I think part of it is like your tan is amazing. And then every outfit you have is really good and the colors are really amazing. Thank you. Yeah. I was like, I was like to break down. Look, when somebody's looking extra good, I'm like, ooh, what do they do different? Yeah. Now I'm gonna go back and look and be it's like, what did I do? Different? I mean, you look amazing all the time, but like when people are looking extra good, I'm like, ooh. Well, I did notice that when I was putting together the present, my outfit is just like a t Maryland t-shirt mm -hmm. and like pink shorts, and I have my hair up, and I don't even think I have my extensions in. It looks like I just have it like kind of up in a ball on the top of my head and I'm wearing little to no makeup if any at all but like your tan and your body look really good yeah I thought it looked cute even though I normally wouldn't like those yeah. kind of scenes <laughs> yeah I say so since it's Kendra's 21st birthday in Vegas I want to theme her present like a poker table then we cut to the scene where Kendra's mom and grandma and brother pull up love seeing her grandma love yes. seeing colin yes and uh they're in her room exchanging presents and one of the things i did say that she gets and i put it in my notes is she got one of those babes oh yeah it was like this sweatshirt that zips all the way up so the hood is like your face is completely covered i thought those were so funny i thought those were so cool and there were two of them that i really wanted one of them had like bloody body parts all over it oh. like a, as a pattern uh -huh. and i just thought that was so me uh -huh. <laughs> and then another one, and I think this was bait, but I'm not sure, or it was just another sweatshirt that did this, but it looked like a, it was all black and it had like a skeleton on it. And it, when it was zipped it up, it was like the skull. Oh, that's cool. And I thought that was really cool. How fun. So I always wanted one of those. <laughs> Then the next scene, it's nighttime at the mansion. You're singing to Duchess. But before you even see me, there's like a really pretty like sweeping shot of mm -hmm. the backyard at dusk. Yeah. Duchess looks crazy. I'm all dressed up. I'm talking about the dogs need their flea medicine, which yeah. is interesting because you don't need, and I know somebody in the comments is going to chime in and go, no, actually you do, or I use it because there's always outliers. You don't need flea medicine in Vegas. Like there's no fleas. Isn't that crazy? Oh. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Even though I spend half my time in LA, I have, don't remember the last time I've used flea medicine or needed it for my dog. That's so crazy. Why Isn't wouldn't that, there be fleas? Because we're in the desert. I don't know why. They don't survive there? Interesting. Do you ever feel like, this is a little behind the scenes tidbit for you guys, when we're talking on here, do you ever hesitate with every single little thing you say because you know someone's gonna chime in in the comments and be like well it's not really that way or yes and I, yes I just need to stop looking at comments which sucks because I love the positive interaction I love the feedback but you can't say any I mean literally this day and age you can't say the world is round without a flat earther coming up like you cannot say anything without somebody going actually mm. I live in Vegas and I've needed there's a my flea epidemic my <laughs> dogs have fleas every day I know so I just want to acknowledge there's always outliers but and I always feel like I, I always say I'm like I never do this or I always do that or blah blah and I have to like quit doing those like superlative type things too yeah, because people can't handle they'll call you out and be like, anymore they'll be like well 10 years ago you went there or did something oh I'll be my like god okay sorry if, if there's anything that like makes me want to quit this job sometimes it's that kind of stuff it's like I feel like I'm losing my sanity because you literally cannot say one thing without somebody coming up with some weird thing that doesn't even make sense but they think it makes sense and they think you're contradicting yourself when you're really not or it's it's too much it makes you question your sanity and then I used to kind of take it serious and be like oh well maybe I didn't know and maybe that's that and you know sometimes of course you don't know everything so sometimes you are wrong but then it's like you don't know who these commenters are like these could be just full of shit people right or just their opinion yeah so that's just a little glimpse into our mental health doing this podcast but did you think that that was sort of weird to leave in the flea medicine yeah yeah you're 100 percent right now that 
You're all dressed up, getting ready to go downstairs for Kendra's birthday dinner. Like, why is that in there? And then it cuts to another scene of me fully not ready, but giving Winnie a bath. You're ready and about ready to walk downstairs. And I'm still in my shorts and t-shirt from the day giving Winnie a bath. And I'm like, okay. I know what it is now. I love this scene. Yeah. But like, why in the fuck is Winnie getting a bath stuffed in the middle of Kendra's 21st birthday episode? Well, it's not very effective. Because we had to sit here and think about it for a second to figure out what it is. But I think I know what they're trying to do. Because like we talked about in the Baby Talk episode a few weeks ago. Like they're very big on like showing our responsibility and our maternal skills and our maturity through how we take care of our pets. Mm -hmm. So you cut straight from Kendra playing with her dogs and there's a pee stain on the floor. And her saying, I'm never going to grow up, blah, blah, blah. To me dressed to the nines oh you need your flea medicine you giving Winnie this really like involved bath I think it's like supposed to be a contrast in maturity and I'm acknowledging it's not very effective like I don't think it works that well but oh. knowing them and how they cut things I think that's what they're trying to do okay so it's comparing and con- contrasting our levels of maturity based on how we are with our animals right now and yeah. Kendra's statement that she had just made yeah I think there would have been better ways to do it I think cutting to you studying yes cutting to me like well, they wouldn't have shown this, but cutting Hef's fingernails or something. <laughs> I don't know, like one, some responsibility. Wait, you're going to have to explain that. Did okay. you really cut Hef's fingernails? Yes, People I are going to ask. So Hef doesn't cut his fingernails with fingernail clippers. He cut them with like cosmetic scissors mm. and he couldn't do his right hand because he's not left-handed. So yeah. he would ask me to like cut his fingernails for him, which who cares? Not a big deal. Um, but I, I feel like there would have been a more effective way to show maturity. I think they're just locked in the mindset of like, oh, we're always going to go to how they mother their dogs to show how maternal they are and how responsible they are. But I feel like it would have been better. I feel like if you would have been cramming for a test right before yes. we left, or I would have been like helping Hef with something, straightening his tie or picking out a shirt or something yeah. like that. That would have been more effective. I think so too, because even after watching it, even writing these notes, until you just said it, I had no idea why they stuck these random things in there. And if anything, I thought they would have been better for the last episode. Totally. They're, they're mothering things. Yeah. And it would have been like better. But I do love that they have it on camera giving Winnie a bath. I did a YouTube video of giving her a bath one uh-huh. time too just because she's so cute. And she just, she morphs into this thing you wouldn't even recognize. She reminds me of like, you know, like an ancient Chinese drawing of a sea serpent. Yeah. How they kind of have bug eyes and they look a little dragon-y. Do you know what I'm talking about? That's what she turns into to me. Or like a salamander (laughs) or something just gave birth to her. Yeah. That's what she looks like. She's so funny because she's so fluffy and her hair is so long and puffy. But then the second she gets a bath, she's like so skinny and so little. And it's just really funny. And then, and I know because of my YouTube video that everybody's dog, I think, does this afterwards. Mm -hmm. But she gets the zoomies after. Yes. And she's like trying, even though I try and draw with a hair dryer and the towel and stuff like that she's got to do roll around on every surface possible to try and get every little drop of water off of her yeah. she's so funny and I just thought that was the cutest thing so I am glad that they got that on camera but I did think it was weird yeah the next scene I don't want to spend a ton of time on is just Kendra getting ready in her room with her mom and her grandma and her brother but I think it's funny how she's putting on her grill that she's so excited about and her grandma is just so disgusted her grandma is appalled she hates by it. the grill so funny yeah so then we go downstairs oh can I make one more yeah. thing on there in commentary you say that you really like the dress that you were wearing a lot and that you're gonna wear it for the upcoming direct tv shoot and then you also go on to say I'm not the type of person who thinks she can only wear something once and if you really like something you should wear it again and I chime in and say oh I totally agree I wear, I wear things all the time but I feel like that's interesting that we were talking about that way back then because as we know <gasps> it's one of the things Kendra puts in her book later that isn't true I forgot about that. Yeah, if you guys don't know, Kendra in her book that she wrote like in 2010 was kind of trying to make it sound like we're like snobby and awful and unwelcoming and how like when she was new, we said we never wear the same thing twice around here, which not only did we never say, but that's not even 
in our character or how we ever like my clothes were on a very specific rotation same like I would wear something out and it was usually cheap clothes and not only that we borrow each other's stuff too totally and it would be like okay I wore that I'm gonna wear it again in two months kind of a thing like I we had such a big schedule for going out and stuff it was definitely I was definitely a re-wearer yeah so not only was it not true at the time when Kendra first got there but now you're talking about the exact same thing in commentary right in front of her yeah and we're agreeing about it but then it's still years later will come out in her book that that's something that we did was never rewore an outfit and yeah look down <laughs> upon it good point I'm glad you brought that up. Um, so then we're downstairs. We're getting ready to go out for her birthday dinner. And Kendra's like doing something weird interaction with Hef where she's like asking him to say like, say Stunna Shades. And he's like not really saying it. And these moments always make me cringe. It's kind of like that cringe where I don't know. Somebody's trying to like, I, I, I don't know how to explain it. but I know what you mean, but. Yeah, it's trying to like. Like, I don't think she was trying to make him look stupid at all, but I did think it made him look kind of cringe and it was just like for clout. It reminds me of the planking photo. I, and yeah. The planking photo happened after we left. It was probably like in 2010 when planking was a trend. And if you don't remember what that was, it was just people would lie flat as a board face down somewhere anywhere it's not even a plank by the way I know you're right you're right it's not a plank you're just kind of like laying down face down stiff as a board and you post on Instagram and that was planking and you do it weird places and it was supposed to be funny I never got it I don't I never understood this trend me and my friends did it a couple times like (laughs) like, I'm gonna admit I did it (laughs) like when we were like out at nightclubs and stuff but um but so after we left somebody posted Hef planking on the mansion dining room table and it was so bad and even though I'd left the mansion and my feelings on Hef had changed and I just felt like it was such a bad look for him first of all because he's old so he looks like a literal corpse it did like old people should not be planking and then he was on the dining room table and there were like gross dirty dishes at the end of the table and I'm like this is not okay. No. You guys, when I saw it, it was jarring to me because I was like, what? Yeah, it was on somebody's Instagram. And I was like, this is not okay. Like, I think he posted it. And he looked like he had diaper booty. I know he wasn't wearing a diaper, but he looked like he had diaper booty in this pose. It was just uh, like, yes. you guys, it was so bad. But this scene kind of gives me the feel of that it feels like and I know Kendra wasn't trying to do it this way but it just like comes off it feels like somebody trying to make him look stupid or like say stunna shades and he's like what like stun it yeah. and he's like not really saying it and it's reminiscent of like the scene in the fight night where she puts the hat sideways on yes. him and it just looks cringe I don't know it cringes me out like I feel like Hef was always very young for his age but not that young and there was something weird about trying to make him it was inauthentic like, like yeah, yeah he was young for his age in his own way that was authentic right and trying to push the inauthentic is cringe it's giving young people trying to be old or old people young people trying to be old (laughs) that was me in my 20s old people trying to be young yeah yeah I agree so then we pull up to Mastro's. I see a David sighting. David, the yeah. photographer. He's the photographer that would follow us around and he'd get to come back to the mansion sometimes and take photos of us there too. But Speaking of birthday dinners, I'm taking my daughter out for her birthday tomorrow. And we already had her birthday party and stuff, but tomorrow's her real birthday when we're filming this. And I asked her, where do you want to go for your birthday dinner? I was thinking like the melting pot or Mastro's or something. And she said, Burger King. What? <laughs> I'm like, I'm going, are you sure? She goes, well, maybe P.F. Chang's. And I'm not a big fan of P.F. Chang's. I don't oh, know really? why. Yeah, I'm not into it. Okay, I never go, so I sound bad saying it, yeah. but I love it when I do go. Like, I love it. And I always think, God, why don't I come here more often? <laughs> I love, love, love it. Maybe but, I need to open my mind. Yeah, but Burger King, I just feel like you can do that any old day, so it doesn't seem very... Well, they're... We try to get them to eat really healthy. So like McDonald's is an exotic food in their mind. Right. And at one point I let it drop that my first job was at McDonald's. And I remember my kids thought that was so cool. (laughs) Like they thought, oh my God, you worked at McDonald's. Like they think it's cool because they're not allowed to have it. Yeah. So. Well, I guess in that case. But I feel like McDonald's is better than Burger King. Well, Burger King doesn't cater to kids as much. So it does surprise me. But 
we'll see we'll see where we end up going yeah so you get out of the limo then we all take photos and then we're seated at mastro's and in commentary we talk about how they seated us in the wine room this Mm -hmm. time and how freezing (gasps) it was in there we talk about that we are just frozen the whole time and i had forgotten about that but then once we said it and i looked at the room that we were in because i wasn't even paying attention Mm -hmm. to like our surroundings and i realized we were in that private room i was like oh my god takes me back i remember i remember just like shivering now that you say that, I remember it. I didn't think of it when I rewatched it. But now that you say that, I was like, I'm like, yeah. And there's a scene where you're like this and you're like, mm-hmm, yeah. And you look very uncomfortable. And I'm positive it's because you're freezing cold. And it's not because you're like not into Kendra ordering a drink. Yeah, because there was this weird edit where Kendra wants the Mastro Martini. And Hef goes, Mastro Martini. And then you can tell this is a weird cut that didn't happen in real time. It cuts to you and you're like, fuck. And it cuts to me and I'm completely doing like an autistic zone out. And I'm like, yeah. But it's clearly it has nothing to do with anything I should be excited about, I think, because I would have I like I knew the cameras were on us. So I would have like at least faked it if I wasn't feeling it. But they're trying to do something here. They're trying to make it look like I am not into this birthday. Yeah. I'm anti. And that's they are. not the case. But they were totally trying to do that. They definitely are. And I don't even think what I was referring to, I mean, who knows, but I don't think that what I was referring to when I was all excited and saying fun was the drink that she was ordering. I think that they were asking us about, are you guys excited for Vegas? Yeah, or maybe Kendra's mom said, oh, I just went into this and you had fun. Like that seems more likely than, I mean, I think you'd get excited about a Mastro Martini too, but I know, I but I know <laughs> no, it's I a weird would, cut. I, I can just tell by watching it, it's a weird cut. So Kendra's cake is a sheet cake with a, print of her Olivia drawing on it which is really cute and then there's this weird thing where like Kendra's blowing her candles out and Hef blows them out too what was that I know you say in commentary I think Hef's just been celebrating his birthday for like two months straight so I think he's used to blowing out the candles yeah and obviously they asked me about that in confessional because they thought it was weird but how strange yeah I mean maybe that was it because we just got off this long trip where he had a cake in every country so maybe it was a reflex at this point well I think Kendra Kendra calls him out on it a little bit because she point laughs and points <laughs> yeah. at him like you're blowing out my candles what are you doing that's so funny and then it shows me giving her you you chant presents 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 and then it shows me giving her my present and then it shows Hef giving her the Olivia frame the Olivia drawing uh-huh. in the frame oh and it shows Mary like coughing and <gasps> Patty looking disgusted when they pull it out I noticed that too and at first I thought wait why did they cut to her coughing but I think they included it to make it look like she didn't approve of Kendra as a pinup yeah which I don't think was true I think I the pinup was very classy and didn't show anything in fact it's the censored version like her boob is covered in the picture but I think they want to make it look like Mary does not approve of Kendra yeah. as a pinup and then she's choking <laughs> over it yeah. and, <laughs> and they they even like Patty look like she's going so but funny. I don't think that yeah, was no, no part way. of it at all and then they have her say oh Bridget and Hef are so thoughtful. Yeah. Where's me? And then they don't show they me don't giving show her you. a present. Which, of course, later in the episode, I give her a necklace. But also, like, I went out of my way to go to Vegas early. And they don't show this at all. But I made, like, gift bags for everybody. And I'm sure I gave her something else that day, too. But they don't show it. And they're very purposely trying to make it look like I'm ignoring Kendra's birthday. And Bridget and Hef are so thoughtful. And I kind of feel like it. they don't do a very good job communicating it. I feel like it goes under the radar. I've never heard any feedback from fans about this episode. Like, Holly, you're a fucking bitch. Why didn't you give her a gift that day? So I don't think it really lands. But I see what they're trying to do. I see do, what they're trying to do, too. And it's annoying. 100%. They make you look like you're uninterested during the birthday dinner. Mm-hmm. They don't show you giving a present. Then Kendra makes that comment they have her make that comment I'm sure she didn't like come up with that on her own and yeah they're deliberately trying to do this and I think it falls flat too because as you're gonna see in the second half portion of this like once we're in Vegas and stuff the camaraderie is there and the bond is there and the friendship is there yeah and and I feel like they can't keep up with it they can't keep going with it yeah and it's interesting because like I said at the top of this episode like I feel two very different ways watching this episode first half I'm annoyed so annoyed and then second half I'm like missing our friendship and it's just interesting the switch and we can talk about that more next time when we get into like 
the second half of the episode. But I think you're right. I think they were heading a certain way, but it didn't pan out in the end and it didn't quite. But I think what they're going for is they want to make it look like I'm so jealous that Kendra gets a birthday in Vegas and I have to go home. Yeah. But if they were going that way in the cut, I know Hef would have made them change it because you can't make it look like she doesn't want to come home to me, you know? Yeah. And it wasn't the case. I wasn't jealous at all. I was fine going home. Like I would get to a point later on when I really started to feel left out and like I couldn't be part of girls days and it would bug me. This wasn't one of them. This was more like I was okay doing what I did that day and going back and stuff and I was happy for Kendra and I thought of course it's a no-brainer. The show wants to cover a 21st birthday. That'll be a great episode but I think they were going for something weird here. They definitely were. So the next scene the rooster crows so we know it's early morning yep. at the mansion <laughs> and um, Brittany and Kendra walk down the stairs and in case you guys don't remember that's Brittany is Kendra's friend from San Diego mm -hmm. and then in interview Kendra says Hef arranged for me and a couple of girls to go on a bus to Vegas and I would like to stop right here and ask you why do you think we took the bus and not flew there because I feel like that bus would have been very pricey to take us all the way to Vegas and back and hang out all night long too while waiting for us and I'm just curious I, I mean I have my thoughts but I was curious what your first thoughts are on that um I think they just wanted footage I think when we fly you can't get any footage of us flying clearly and we already did a Vegas episode in season one where we fly and you just don't get much of that and I think they probably felt like they were missing something that's what I was thinking so they're too. like how can we get like footage of the girls actually getting there and I think it was something that had been done on other tv shows like the example I can think of my head is remember that MTV show Robin Big and they took a party bus and they stopped at the abandoned water park and were like oh. skateboarding in it I don't know if that had already come out at this point but that's just an example of like I think that was already happening on reality shows where it's like oh you want to go somewhere let's get the big party bus so we can get everybody like pre-gaming and get yeah. all that footage I think it was definitely for the cameras and for the pre-gaming aspect of it the mm -hmm. anticipation of getting there which they would have missed if we all flew yeah but flying there would have given us so much more time totally <laughs> the bus took forever so I'm not on the bus because I flew in earlier to like set up for the party and set up all the gift bags and things like that. And because I knew I had to turn around and go home so quickly that I wouldn't have had any time on the ground in Vegas had I taken the bus and then flown back. Yeah. So I made a list of all of the girls that came with us. And of course, it's Kendra and I, a playmate named Lindsay Vulo, Amber Campisi, Sarah Underwood, Crystal Cam Camden, Brittany and Brittany. One of them's Brittany from San Diego. And the other one is just Brittany, a girl that used to come to the mansion. Kiana Chase, Kim Holland. And that's it at the beginning, I think. Oh, wait, Taylor James. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it at the beginning yeah it's an interesting guest list because I feel like half of those people I'm like oh yeah Kendra was friends with that person but the other half I'm like did Kendra even know that girl like I think they were just people who were happened to be staying at the mansion working at that time I think so too because some of them very odd choices for Kendra yeah and nothing not odd choices because of them like they're no. all lovely people we love them but people who had been playmates like years earlier that Kendra didn't really know or weren't really her vibe kind of. Yeah. And then the next scene, it shows the Palms Hotel. The Palms is so nostalgic to me. Me too. Like I feel like I grew up there in a way. I feel like I had like so many of my first like adult moments there. It truly felt for a while kind of like a home away from home. 100%. Like I felt like I was just going back to my apartment in Vegas when I would go to the Palms all the time. Totally. Yeah, it's crazy seeing that. And I'm hanging out with Destiny. And in commentary, we're talking about, oh, what show is Destiny doing that's set in Vegas? Da, da, da. And that was a show called Paradise City. I don't think she was like a main cast member. I think she like popped up on it every once in a while. But there was a show called Paradise City. It was Ryan Seacrest's first show for E! Because after Girls Next Door got successful, they signed a big production deal with Ryan Seacrest. And his first show was Paradise City. It only lasted a season. It kind of flopped. And later, after I left when we were talking about possibly doing a spinoff, I was like, well, I'm doing a show in Vegas. I'm moving to Vegas. That's my spinoff. And no one wanted it. Kevin was like, fuck that. E was like, no. Lisa was like, every, you don't understand, Holly. Like every season we get a Vegas pilot and it never works. Like nobody wanted to do a Vegas show. Yeah. <laughs> but we did it and it worked. So that's amazing. But it's just funny to think back. Like I forgot about that show. 
Paradise City. And that premiered when our season three of Girls Next Door premiered. Because oh. remember that party at the mansion right before the season three premiere? And there were like all the posters and the step and repeats. And like Paradise City was one of the things that was featured. That seems familiar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, I, oh, I, not always, that would be crazy, but I think of that a lot, actually, when they said that to you. Because I, when I'm, like, thinking about pitching a show, and even nothing to do with that or whatever, uh-huh. I just think about that and how wrong people can be about certain things or how one thing doesn't work out, and so they forever. It's sort of like us with um doing wanting to do our paranormal show and yeah. stuff. They said female paranormal doesn't sell. Well, I don't think that's true. I think they just haven't found the right mix the right way to present it yeah the television industry is so weird because by nature it's such a creative industry but the people who are executives you know you have to look at it from a business standpoint and the people up above you are purely business people and they're like well if it hasn't worked before it's not going to work now so it's an odd clash and I feel like everybody I know in the television industry feels the same way Mm -hmm. and I know even the executives are kind of caught in the middle because they want to do fun things and things they believe in and stuff but if you're looking at the bottom line and you're like this show hasn't worked yet they don't want to green light it but you never know because this is a creative industry that show could totally work so it's a totally different dynamic so it's yeah. just awkward yeah <laughs> it really is and then it shows me and destiny at the palms pool i can tell i've entered my roberto cavalli phase because i'm wearing a roberto bikini and then the dress i was wearing to kendra's dinner was a just cavalli dress but i do this switch like halfway through the mansion years like first it was all about baracci 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 for everything and then i switch to like roberto cavalli and just cavalli and that's kind of where i go so I've switched. I've entered my new era. The Cavalli era. And you know what I hate? It makes me cringe so hard when I see this is Destiny and I pose for a photo and I do the thing where I stick my arms straight up in the air like a Vanna White presenting pose. And for some reason, I hate it when I see myself do that. And it was such a thing back then. I still do it. Not all the time. Most of the time. No, I don't think you do it most of the time. I think it's rare. <laughs> But I hate it when I do it. I don't know why. It's like it makes, I'm like, why am I doing that? And I think it's because my arm is so straight. It's like throwing a weird angle into the picture and ruining it. And I hate it. (laughs) I honestly don't like pictures that people do now, like influencers and stuff, where they try to act like they don't even notice the camera or they're just wistfully walking away or like just just all like not posed in any way just sort of like dumpy standing there I hate those kind of photos that's definitely a trope people are gonna get sick of too like I'm I had like, a boring, million examples boring 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 pass into my head when I when you say we're saying that so I flashed the camera at one point which I thought was funny and like, Hef was pissed at me when I did that I was just gonna add that like part. I'm surprised he left it in because after when we were watching the rough cuts he was like why are you doing that It was just weird, his attitude about, like, what nudity was appropriate and what wasn't. Kendra nudity is okay. Your nudity is inappropriate. 100,000%. (laughs) Because there's a scene later in the episode that we'll get to where she's wasted in the club and fully, like, pops tit out. I think for the same reason I did. Like, she thought it was funny. But, like, her boob is just, like, sitting there out. And, like, that's okay and that's fine. No, she was doing it all night long. Really? All night long. We'll get into it. But yeah, I kept tucking it back in. I was like, no, we need to keep the dress on. (laughs) And, like, nothing wrong with that. But it's weird that, like, I can't do it. Yeah. And then I say in commentary about why I'm able to have fun in Vegas because I have so many responsibilities at the mansion. And I feel like that's such a cop out and a cover up because it's not that I have responsibilities. I mean, yeah, I have to be in at a certain time and I have to always be by half side and I have to look a certain way and kind of act a certain way. But I don't really have responsibilities. It's just I'm saying that to like make excuses for half. Like I can have fun in Vegas because I'm not being watched and I can be myself and I'm not being like snapped at anytime I'm having fun. It's not that I have too many responsibilities in LA to have fun. It's because Hef's over my shoulder all the time. And if I'm too boisterous or show too much energy or am too happy, I get snapped at. And yeah. that's, and I just, it blows my mind to think about living that way. Like imagine 24 seven, like you can't show too much emotion or you can't be too happy about things. I'm honestly surprised it didn't have more of an effect on me than it did. Yeah, for sure. Well, I love that you guys are playing on pool floats because I feel like a lot of the hotels like that don't have pool floats because it makes the pool too crowded. Oh. So maybe this was before the pools got mm-hmm. so overly crowded or whatever. But I was like, oh my God, pool floats in Vegas. I love it. I have this friend who always posts rants about the pool parties in Vegas and he calls it dick soup. And he'll do these, and he'll do these funny captions. He'll be like, 
you motherfuckers are really going in that pool with so much piss and shit and semen and people who haven't showered dick soup and he hasn't done one of those posts in a while but he used to crack me up so bad oh my god it sucks (laughs) because i love a pool party but i do think about it well they always talk about like back in the day rehab was like the big pool party at the hard rock and people would say well there's all these people in the pools but you go to the bathroom and there's no line so where do you think people are like pissing the whole time of course 100 percent they're peeing in the pool (sighs) pump that chlorine baby (sighs) i know it's just like i have to like just uh get buzzed and not think about it yeah and this is another scene where I'm at the pool with destiny where I'm like oh my god I'm being myself so I saw my first version of that when I'm at Victoria's baby shower and then this is two so two times in this whole like season and a half we watched I'm like oh my god I'm actually being myself and I'm watching myself right now like this is crazy yeah so then it cuts back to the bus and we are dancing around and hanging out and we're having fun in commentary Kendra they show the bus like going down the freeway and in commentary Kendra makes a a comment she said did you guys see the reflections of the camera on the bus and I was thinking she just meant like they show the scene of me like dancing or whatever Uh and I thought she meant like in the mirrors or something inside so I rewound it a little bit to see like why does she think that's such a big deal and then I realized oh my god it's when the the when the bus is going down the freeway you know how they would always be in like a minivan next to us and they oh, yeah. would pop the whole door open I forgot about that me too it's like a memory unlocked you guys they would pull the whole side slider door open and the cameraman would be holding onto the seat belt <laughs> and hanging out of the van going like 70 miles an hour down the freeway filming us net to get that shot of us next to them Ghost going down the, the highway whip. Yeah, and I just remembered all the crazy shit that the cameraman used to have to do. And, like, even in the back, like, if we're running around L.A., they would pop the back of that minivan open, and the cameraman would sit back there with somebody, like, holding on to him or her, but usually it was a guy, um, filming us while they're hanging out the back. Like, it was crazy the things they did. How is that legal? Well, I don't think it totally is, but they probably see it so much around L.A. They let people get away with it. Wow, that's nuts. But yeah, it just totally unlocked a memory for me when I went back and looked. You know what unlocked a memory for me is Kendra has this pink Playboy purse in her lap. And I think we all had that purse. We were gifted it by licensing. And for some reason, seeing that purse, it just brought me back. Because like I haven't thought of that purse in so long. And it's like I can almost feel what it feels like to be like holding that purse. So weird. That's funny. So we're all having a good time. Everything seems to be going smoothly. And then Sarah asked Kendra if she brought her girl and she's like oh yeah I have it and then she thinks about it for another second and she starts looking through her bag and then the freak out happens (laughs) and you guys we had to whip the bus off to the side of the freeway and I don't know if you know but it is so dangerous to be parked on the side of a freeway like that and you can just see the cars ripping what you can feel the cars whip by you and your car kind of shakes and we sat there for like 30 minutes while they called the mansion and Kendra's like look by my phone for the girl look in the bathroom for the girl over by my computer Uh, my vibrator drawer my like sending JD on a wild goose chase to find this girl and it was in her purse the whole time that's funny did you guys think that if she had not found her grill you would have really like turned around and wasted like two more hours going back to fetch the grill and then getting back on the road because that would have cut severely into your Vegas time well, what were we going to do if they found the girl? Was somebody going to drive it to the bus or were we going to have to flip around and go get it? Were we going to meet halfway? Like what? I don't know what difference it would have made at this point. She left it. We're already on the freeway. She says in commentary later that we hadn't gotten that far, but we are on the 405. So we've gotten far enough to where it would be a, a it would cause a lot of setback to have to turn mm-hmm. around and go back. So I was just curious, what is the end game here? Like who's bringing it to us? Or what are the, what what's gonna happen? Yeah, I would think since you guys pulled over, the plan was, oh my god, we can't go further until we get this grill. But why wouldn't we have flipped back and been on the phone while we're driving back? We're coming back for the grill. Can you meet us out at the gate? Like get this to us. I bet there was some like back and forth going on between like the crew and production and like wait what are we going to do? Is it worth it to go get the grill? Do we not? Because you guys are on a tight schedule. Yeah and then were the, was the crew just going to send somebody back maybe to go get it? If they I don't found think it? that would have saved any time though because it takes the 
same amount of time, you know. But if we had separate, I don't know. I don't know. And then it got me thinking, why is this such a big deal? And then I was thinking, I wonder, and I texted you about uh-huh. it. I wonder if this was like a paid campaign for her. I know it wasn't like that. Those weren't as big as they are now, mm-hmm. like an influencer campaign, but it very well could have been something that she was expected. They gave this to her, but she was expected to promote it in a certain way and at a certain time. That could be. She does say somewhere, I don't know if it's commentary or where, that the whole point of the grill was she got it for her birthday and she wanted to wear it for her birthday. But they did already have the guy who made it on an episode. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like anything's possible. It could have been. And sometimes people, like the Playboy makeup people, even have expectations they don't even tell you. Like apparently I didn't promote the Playboy makeup enough after getting $250,000. Right. (laughs) Which I didn't, guys, if you're not in on that joke. But I think that's just kind of how she is. I think she's very good at like creating drama for the cameras. Like, oh my God, if we're missing a fork, it's a freak out moment. I mean, it could be either way, but I think it could also just be her being her and she really like wanted to show off this grill. Yeah. By the way, you guys, and I'm pointing this out because we talked about it in our Steven interview. He was talking about Steven from security and this is Steven from security on the phone. And I love how he's kind of like giggling. Like he knows this is so dumb and like, what the fuck are we doing right now? Yeah. Oh, and they're playing the same music while JD is running around looking for her grill. They play the same music that when Brian was looking for my polka dot bikini oh really I didn't notice that's so funny it's funny they have specific music for like looking for things the girls can't find Mm -hmm. (laughs) did you see when JD busts into the room the housekeeper just looks astounded (laughs) yeah it's happening right now yeah and maybe the housekeeping had it on for noise but her tv's on in the room even though she's gone did you notice that I did notice that and I notice it's on all the time and they don't shut it off it's crazy it's yeah, crazy it's that weird. they let it on for all these scenes and stuff because she was getting ready in her room with her grandma and stuff it was on in the background and I'm like every once in a while I see them forgetting to turn mine off in my room but it's so rare it was such a thing for them to come in and like sl- turn off the radio or turn off the tv immediately and I'm just like how is hers always on yeah I don't know well so Kendra finds her girl it's in her purse she puts it back in her mouth and I think it's funny they cut to a scene where like all of us are just sort of staring at her like oh my god the looks on your guys faces and obviously it's cut out of order like you guys weren't really dogging her but the looks on people's faces are so fucking funny I I can't even handle it I also have to ask you why do you guys all have blankets was it cold in there yeah whoa it was cold in there and I think just so we could all sleep and be cozy Uh and stuff like that because you'll see on the bus ride home we use those blankets and pillows and stuff yeah and I think it was early So Mm -hmm. we could all take a nap or whatever on the way there. And I think we did. Especially Kimberly Holland's face in those cutaways. It's so funny. She just looks like what happened was the worst thing ever. It's so funny. Well, it definitely set us back. So should we stop right before we get to Vegas? I think so. And pick it up next week? Okay, so... The mood's going to change next week. It's going to be a lot more fun on the show. It gets crazy. Yeah. And if you guys want more content, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash girlsnextlevel. Find out what happened to Bridget in the cemetery. And we will see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Bye. For more content, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash girlsnextlevel.